Hey everyone, this is Chris Johnson at Living Waters Fly Fishing. We're going to start our fly fishing and fly tying video series this year with a fly tying video of none other than the Rio Bandito. And don't worry, it will look larger on screen here in just a moment. We also have Australian Possum and Crawfish Orange now in store, and I know that's been notoriously hard to get the past couple of years. We have solved that problem. We had a lot of pelts custom dyed for the store, so they are in stock. The fly was originally born out of the need for a very easy to tie and easy to mass produce juvenile crayfish pattern for Rio Grande cichlids. I tested it, I loved it, it caught cichlids like crazy, and now it is one of the mainstays for me, not just for Rio Grande cichlids, but also for sunfish, largemouth, Guadalupe bass. We've caught carp, catfish, trout, you name it, they eat it. I caught a tilapia on it last year. So everything loves it. I would highly advocate that you tie a few or a few thousand for your box. And also, if you're not a fly tire, they are available through Uncle Feather Merchants as well. So it is a fly that they have picked up and uh, they are distributing worldwide. So if you uh, would like to learn how to tie it, stick around and we'll show you how to get it done. Thank you all for watching. Okay, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started on the Rio Bandito. Not overly complicated to tie, but incredibly effective. So first off, I went ahead and put a hook already in the vise. And I'm going to be really honest with you. You can tie this thing. I mean, I've tied it all the way up to a size 8 on a jig hook. I've tied it all the way down to a 16. You can go smaller with it if you felt like doing so. There's a number of things you can do. This is, this is being tied on a... Uh, 490BL from Hannock. This hook is actually discontinued, um, but I'm gonna, I put this hook in there for a reason, and the, and the reason why is this. If you can find a hook that's similar in shape and wire diameter, that is my favorite hook for this fly. Um, that being said, I have some other ones that I tie this fly on pretty frequently. The 403BLJ, arguably one of the best jig hooks out there. Um, very, very sharp, very reliable. Um, my originals were actually tied all on this hook. Uh, the only reason that I went to the heavier wire is I just kept catching really, really big fish on small flies. The 413 is another one that I would highly recommend as well, uh, and it has a very good range of sizes as well. Uh, but anything that's going to be a medium to heavy wire jig hook that's got a wide gape, something like that, th I mean, this is just an incredible hook. Um, if you can still find some floating around out there, then grab them. Um, but I would also say that anything that's going to be similar in size and shape, this is a size 14, and I've put a 4 millimeter. Uh, tungsten slotted bead on there in that metallic red. Um, and I love Hannock beads because they're so easy just to get started. So for instance, all I'm going to do here is just, this is a uh, 10 aught kind of burnt orange thread from Vivas. And I think this is a 10 aught if I remember correctly, it could be 12. I don't remember. It doesn't have a label on it, but it looks like 10. All you want to do is build a little thread dam right there behind the bead. And if you'll notice, the bead doesn't slide down anymore. You can touch it, mess with it, do whatever you want to there, and it doesn't slide rearward on the hook. That's when you're done. Get this thread down to just behind the hook point. So about right there is really what we're after. The first step is going to be to cut some Australian possum, and this is a crawfish orange. And we're going to take a little bit of that, and here, here's the key. And by the way, I know that there has been an absolute struggle getting this stuff, this Australian possum in burnt orange. We actually had a number of pelts dyed for the shop. I think it was slightly over 40 pelts or right at 40 pelts, um, somewhere in that vicinity um, that we had dyed for the shop. So we actually have a lot of crawfish orange Australian possum still in stock. So if you need some of this and haven't been able to get any, um, your prayers have been answered. We have Australian possum in burnt orange, and it's pretty much just available here. This tail, what I'm doing is I'm just taking those fibers and all this stuff, this is just that under fur. We want to get all that out. If you wanted to tease it out with a dubbing needle or a brush, that's completely fine. See how you can just kind of tease that and all that under fur starts to break up. You're going to save that for later. So all this stuff, you can typically just do it by hand by kind of pinching and pulling. Save that stuff for later because it's going to become a very important part of this fly in just a moment. If you want to take your fingernails and kind of get in there and tease it out, you can. But that's what we're left with is a very nice bunch of Australian possum. Now that's going to be just a touch heavy, so I don't want quite that much. I'm going to slim that down just a smidge. That right there is more or less what I'm looking for. That amount. Take this. Come over it with a thread. Very, very straightforward, very simple. Just a simple capture wrap. Take this, 
kind of look at the general size and the tie-in here. If you'll look, you can see that the, the tail's really no more, it's actually slightly less than the entire hook shank long. You don't want an extraordinarily long tail on this fly. If anything, I'd actually say make it a little bit shorter, about right here. And the reason for that is this. Rio Grande cichlids are what this fly was or originally created for. And Rio Grande cichlids are absolutely known for grabbing a fly by the tail or rubber legs or long material and moving it out of an area that they're guarding as opposed to actually eating it. Uh, and Rio Grande cichlids are very, um, I would say just, they're very good at taking these flies, picking them up and moving them, grasping them instead of inhaling them. They, they do a lot of things um, with the precision that is not found in bass or sunfish. Simply trim that remnant of the material off and tie that down. And what we have now is a very firmly tied in uh, tail for this fly, all in Australian possum. This is our next material. It's these grizzly rubber legs, and that's going to be in the micro size. So that right there. General rule of thumb, these legs are long enough that you can actually cut them in half, and it makes enough material to tie in a leg for a single fly. So we just cut a leg in half right there. That's all we're looking for. I normally tie my legs in in a loop. I know everybody's got their own way of doing it. I loop my legs in like this and just put a little loop there. That's all I'm doing. I'll position the legs off to the side of the fly, kind of on the bottom and on the side. Where when I'm done tying, these legs should splay out on either side, something kind of like that. And then with that little loop that's remaining, you could either tie it down or pull it up and just give it a trim, and then there's no excess at all. Make sure that's tied down firmly. We don't want anything to go anywhere. All right, final steps on the fly. This is not... Uh, this isn't overly complicated, but it is the most complicated part of this fly. So we've done two things here. Number one, we have a bunch of that dubbing material that we pulled out of the tail. And then I have some guard hair, some actual body hair from the Australian possum that I've prepared in a Petty John clip. What I'm going to do with the stuff in the Petty John clip is I'm going to size it first of all. So I want to make sure that these guard hairs aren't too terribly long. Otherwise, they're going to be longer than the fly when tied in. The very next step is I'm going to take these long Petty John scissors and cut a lot of that fluffy business off. I don't want that. I just want the guard here. So that's what we're after there. We're going to actually keep that to the side, and we're going to split our thread and then grab our dubbing. So here, take a very sharp needle. This is just a Petty John dubbing needle. Split that thread. Viva splits very easy as long as you are... Uh, as long as you're not using their 6 aught, which is twisted and doesn't split to save your life. But all we're going to do is take that dubbing and insert it in that dubbing loop. That's all we're after. That's probably too much, but we're just going to go with it. Then take your clip, insert that on the edge of the dubbing loop that is closest to the tire, and spin it. So here what we're going to do is take our bobbin, spin it, let those twists build up in the thread, so right now that our bobbin's just spinning, 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 and the thread is draped over my finger. You simply move those twists up into the thread. Watch that one rubber leg. If it wants to get a little unruly, that's not a problem. And now you can see, I'll try to double this over. You can see we have this really nice dubbing brush that was made just from spinning that bobbin. Now, we're going to take any of the real long material out of this dubbing brush on the, on the dubbing end and leave all the guard hair. So that's what we're after right there. If you've got any super long tufts of dubbing, we want that gone. Get this thing situated. I've got a little leg problem there. All right, we are all good to go. This thing is ready to wrap. So what we're going to do is make our first wraps, trying to keep your legs in position. Stroke rearward. That's all we're doing here as we tie the fly. Notice the legs are still splayed off to the sides of the fly. That's what we want. Every wrap is moving forward. And then right here, we've run out of dubbing, and now we're all into guard hair. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Now, this can get a little unruly, so what we want to do is take every wrap that we make and stroke it backward. And I promise you, if it doesn't look really good, it's still going to fish great. I'm hoping this one looks good when we're done with it. It's kind of the whole point of having a tying video, but we'll see. You know, it's a natural fiber. Not everything's created equal. Take that, stroke everything back. Once it's stroked back, make a couple of thread wraps right behind the bead, just like that. Bunch everything down. A couple of thread wraps just kind of pushes everything rearward. 
Notice our legs are still splayed out. Everything looks good there. Have some nice clean thread wraps. And all we're going to do is make a couple of whip finishes right behind the bead. That's it. And that's it there. Take your scissors, trim the remaining thread off. Here we're going to cut our legs to be slightly longer than the tail. See that they're not very, very long. That's one of the secrets is we do not want to make these legs overly long. Otherwise, cichlids would be able to grab them, this fly by the legs, and not actually get a hook in their mouth. Here, the final step is to trim the bottom of the fly flush. And if you want to insert the scissors from the side, sometimes that makes it a little easier um, because these uh, guard hairs can be a little stiff. Trim the entire body flush on the bottom and leaving that collar on that top plane of the fly. So we want that collar on the top side. Kind of stroke any of that remnant dubbing out of there. And then what we're left with is pretty much this, and that is a finished Rio Bandito. Um, you can trim it up if you want, make it a little bit more, uh, you know, pretty for the box. But I promise you at this point, this thing is ready to fish. You drop that in front of a sunfish, a Guadalupe bass, a Rio Grand cichlid, anything like that, it's going to get eaten. I've had carp eat these, catfish eat these, tilapia eat them. I've caught cutthroats in mountain lakes with them. Uh, you name it, this fly has caught it. So uh, it's really, really a fantastic multi-species fly, arguably the best multi-species fly I've ever invented. And uh, I know it will do absolute work for you on the water, uh, anywhere you go. So please tie a few for your box. Don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. If you need Australian possum, we've got it. Uh, so we're happy to help however we can. And if you have any questions, just contact the shop. We'll see you in the store or out on the water. Thanks again for watching.